Good morning. <laughs> what up, what up, dogs? Y'all, I used to tell this joke in class. I'm having a hard time today. A lot of technical. I got pillows. Tammy. Anyway, I used to tell this joke in class. I would come in and I would go, man, it smells like up dog in here. And then I would wait for some kid. If there's 20, 30 kids in there, surely somebody is going to go, what's up dog? And then I would go, what's up dog? <laughs> That's my favorite joke of all jokes in the history of jokes. But let's get down to business. I've been doing some videos here and there about the old videos that I made back when I was teaching. So this one is very short and uh, we're going to watch it. I'm going to give you a reaction to this video because as short as it is, and as goofy as it is, it's one of my favorite videos. It's not the favorite, but it's one of my favorites. So let's check this out. It's testing morning. Um, I'm in the ESEP lead office. There's announcements going on. A lot of things going happening here. And uh, I have just fixed this stapler. If I had not fixed this stapler, we would not have been able to staple together the rosters the master rosters for all the testing in the whole school. So thank God that I have been able to impact testing by fixing this stapler. That's, that's it, 30 seconds. Now you would think, Chris, what can you get out of a 30 second video? Well, there's a lot of things, a lot. First of all, number one, uh, I was a YouTube rookie. I didn't realize that videos had to be a certain length if you post a video, it has to be a certain length before you can make money. What a goofball, I did not know. And I felt compelled, because that's number one. Number two, I was so just overtaken by what had just happened that I felt compelled to make a video in the middle of the most important time of the year for our school. I needed to make a 30 second video while all this stuff was going on around me uh, I mean, this was chaos. This would be testing in, in, in a middle school uh, or an elementary school or a high school is like we're trying to all come together and you have about a quarter of the building that is fighting to stop the apocalypse. And then you have three quarters of the building that's trying to just have a normal day. That's what it's like. It is the craziest thing. So uh, that was occurring. So that's number two. Number three uh, is this shows that I didn't understand that when you made a video that it needs to be up here instead of down here because it makes you look ugly and your chin fat. So I didn't know that yet. So that video was taken from this angle instead of that angle. That's 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 number three. Number four. Uh, it showed that uh, as a man, uh, men have to be, if they do anything, okay, no matter how simple, uh, they like recognition. Um, honey, did you notice that I put a new roll of toilet paper in the, in the bathroom today? I took the old thing out and I threw it and I put it, they want recognition. Honey, did you notice that uh, I put my bowl in the sink after I ate my cereal this morning? Did you, not, did you notice that? Men love recognition for anything they do. In their mind, uh, there, there's, there should be a trophy that they get for any successful completion of any task. And uh, if you want them to really respond, uh, if you would give them some recognition every time they do something, it's like a little kid, it's like a toddler. Uh, treat it like any time like a toddler goes to the potty and you get all excited. If you treat everything a man does like he was a toddler that just went to the potty and you praise him and give it, he will do everything you ever tell, you ever want him to do. He'll do it. He'll be the best 
man you have ever dealt with in your whole life. So there's a little advice for you for that. So that was, what was that, number four? Number, number five, there's so much stuff, so much stuff here. Number five, um, the fact that I could fix that stapler, because I know I'm gonna tell you, we were in an office, uh, you have, there are so many federal and state rules and regulations, and if you break any of them, you are breaking the law <laughs> in these situations, and it's time sensitive. You have to start at a certain time. The whole school uh, bell schedule for the rest of the day all depends on what you're doing. You have to shut off the, there's so much stuff. I mean, it really is crazy. And so anyway, when, where was I going with this? Oh, when something happens uh, in testing, it, it, it is, it, it's like an emergency of all emergencies. And so this stapler was not working in the office and we didn't have time to go somewhere else and find another stapler. We needed to staple that stuff together. And so um, the fact that I was able to take that stapler, open it up, take out a, uh, I think I used a letter opener and I finagled around with it. I don't remember what all I did, but I fixed it. It was broken. I fixed it. Bottom line. The fact that I could do that, because I can guarantee you, everybody in that office was probably 15 years younger or 20 years younger than me. And I can promise you that not a single one of them could have fixed that stapler. They wouldn't even have been able to comprehend how to fix that stapler. They're from the generation of, let's just get a new stapler. Let's just go down to the office and there's a, there's a supply room and we've got 15 staplers in there. We'll get a new stapler, we'll bring it down here, and then we'll load it and we'll fix it and we'll, we'll staple. When I started teaching, um, number one, there might just be one stapler in, in, in your side of the school, and you all shared a stapler. It was, it was down there in the workroom where everybody, or if you did happen to have a stapler, okay, and uh, you had a stapler in your room, it was your stapler, uh, you weren't going to get another stapler. You weren't going to get one that year. Probably weren't going to get one the next year. Uh, I don't know how you got the stapler. You must have stole the stapler because I don't know how you got it because they didn't give us staplers. And so, you know, if you managed somehow or another, you knew the lady, the secretary down at the office, and you were in good with her, and the school only got five staplers a year or something like that, and you were happened to be one of the top five people and got one of those staplers, um, you knew how to fix it because this might be your stapler for the next 15 years. And so you better maintain, change your stapler's oil, uh, rotate your stapler's tires. You better do everything you can do with that stapler because there will not be another stapler. So I was from that generation of stapler maintenance. And if your stapler tore up, you desperately, you, you fixed it. You had to. We didn't, we didn't get any more stuff. So if you wanted a stapler uh, that was yours, you, you took care of it. So I was probably the only person in that office that even knew that you could fix a stapler, that it was even an option. So uh, when I fixed it, the people in that room really were kind of in awe of me. They were like, how did you do that? Magic. Old man magic is how I did that. And so um, that, was, that was number six. Uh, man, there's a lot of stuff. Uh, number seven, if, uh, <laughs> if, if you understood, like I said, this is my last year and I was getting ready to retire and everybody else, you know, they're facing 20 more years of testing and it was so stressful. And so, like I said, it was, it's like the apocalypse is happening in one quarter of the building and everybody's running around with their hair on fire and you're trying to get all these kids. This is the one time all year. This is the one time in their whole school to, where they really do have to not talk and they really can't have their phones and they really, where they really, they really have to follow the rules. This is the only time in, in, in your whole schooling career that there's rules and those rules are the law and you have to follow them or it's a big deal. And so, you know, it, it just, people just get, you know, 
And so it is the most nerve wracking time that there is. And uh, I was the testing coordinator for the school. I was, in, I was responsible for everything that happened during that testing. The first person they were gonna come to was me. And they were gonna go, we would point their finger at me and go, what in God's name have you done to mess up the most important thing in the history of world education, a test, a, a state standardized or federal standardized test, we will kill you and make your body disappear. I mean, it was, you know, it was the most nerve wracking time. And so uh, the fact that I was laughing and having fun and making videos and just like, <laughs> shows that I was about done. That was my last testing session. Period. What was that, number seven? Number eight. Um, that was the about the only thing I had to do with testing, even though I was the testing coordinator, because the school administration, which I was part of, apparently behind my back decided that Chris is not trustworthy enough or with it enough to uh, do testing and, and even though but we're not going to take his title testing coordinator because you know how men are they love to have titles give them a title and they're, they're oh yeah i'm the testing coordinator and so um we're not going to take his title because he's a man and that would crush him and we're all women so what we're going to do is behind his back we're going to do all the testing coordinating and work and then uh he's going to show up and go, okay, what do we need to do? And they're going to go, nothing. You don't have to do anything. Uh, you could fix that stapler. Uh, so they took all of my responsibility away because it was my last year and they didn't trust me and they couldn't afford for me to make a mistake and think, well, he don't care. He's getting ready to retire. And so they really were doing all the work and um, I had no idea that that was going on. <laughs> well, I figured it out pretty quick. When I went to the first meeting, and I walked in and I'm like, okay, let's, uh, let's get this started. And everybody else had everything already ready and done. And I just kind of sat there and went, oh, we're already ready to go, huh? Good meeting. Uh, <laughs> that was a phenomenon that was going on uh, that I didn't even realize. And here is a perfect example of the fact that uh, I just had to be there. Now, I had responsibilities. That they gave me as a testing coordinator <laughs> that they assigned to me like sit here in the hall and monitor because you had to have people you know anyway so uh that was another what was that eight uh i, I could go on and on guys I, I could just sit here and ramble on and on about this 35 second video that didn't earn me a single cent on uh youtube that was taken from a bad angle uh, that probably was very confusing to the people that watched it and they probably thought so what you fixed the stapler big deal old man um, but it was it it really was a big deal that I fixed that stapler and that was my um, that was the pinnacle right there of my career as a testing coordinator that was the peak and I wanted to record it for posterity and I did anyway Guys, y'all have a good day, and uh, I hope that you never have to be involved in any type of a standardized testing in your life, and I hope that you never have to administer any type of standardized testing in your life, and I hope that the standardized testing that is given by the state and the feds and all this kind of stuff does not affect you in a negative way or your child. Uh, because I'll have to do a video later about standardized testing because I'm not a fan of standardized testing, period. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see y'all later.